Welcome back. This is going to be the final video in the free section, kind of like the, you know, get to know me kind of uh, warm and fuzzies before you have to register and sign up for the full course, which I really, guys, if you're serious about doing this, yeah, there's a lot of free stuff on YouTube. There's a lot of free stuff all over the place. But you're not going to learn the stuff you need to know for free for very simple, for one very, you know, candid reason. If everybody did everything for free, nobody would make any money. Just like you make money at your job, well, this is how I make money. This is how I pay my bills. This is how I put my daughter through college. This is how I raise my three grandkids, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And more importantly, this is how I keep my girlfriend of 20 years happy. So if that's not a reason enough, that's it. So this next technique I want to share with you is a real time-tested technique of how to build my tags without writing code from scratch and do it in a very logical, simplistic way. Now, for those of you that are new to building HTML pages, I'm going to make this so enjoyable, so simple. All you have to do is listen to my voice and follow my exact logic, my exact vocabulary. I don't make up words. I use the exact same word, same words that the software uses. So as an example, I won't be calling it this or that, or as an example, if I come down here, I won't say, which I've seen on other videos, by the way, they say, okay, what you do, you come down here and you change your settings. Well, it doesn't say settings, it says rules. Those are CSS rules. So right away, they're confusing the student. Okay, life is confusing enough. I'm not here to confuse you. I'm here to teach you how the software thinks and build a great process to make simple changes. Now. Here's my objective for teaching software in general, whether it's Photoshop or Illustrator. If you build your document the right way, it's very, very simple next week, next month, next year to make changes to that document for two reasons. A, to make the client happy so you can work smarter. B, I can now use that same document that I built for another client and go into a different direction with it. I cannot tell you how many expensive websites I built and I already had had it like 60% done before I actually started because I used other ideas and other designs and other things I did before. For those of you out there, and again, no offense, you could be the greatest designer in the world. But if you think you can come up with the newest design in the world, believe me, it's been done before. In fact, if it's really good design, it was done back in the 20s and 30s when they had real design back in those days. So let's move forward. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to hit Command minus. Now, Command minus on Macintosh, Control minus on Windows. My objective here is to just get a different version size of my site. So, Command key minus Macintosh, Control minus on Windows. I can basically zoom in and zoom out. So, Command key minus, I'm just going to zoom out of my page for a second. Now, here's what I'm looking to do. Okay, now I can't see all my sections of my page if this is zoomed in. So, if I hit Command zero as an example. So, I'm sorry. My mistake on that. Uh, uh, Dreamweaver's command option one. Command option one fits in window. So command option one, Macintosh, control, alt one for windows. So as an example, I'm just gonna make sure this is taking up my full screen here. And I'm gonna sc scroll this over here. So that's taking up the full width of my screen. So again, what I wanna share with you, if you command minus, you can see more or less of your page. So I'm gonna use this to actually build the tags that I need to make this work. Okay, so very important step here. Okay, we're going to use this to build our tags. Now, since this is this is on a colored background and it's hard to see black on blue, so we're just going to make a body tag rule to just temporarily turn our body copy to both to white. So I'm going to select the tag. Now, for those of you that have not seen my videos before, I involve you into thinking, and this is what you want to do. I'm going to select the tag, make a rule. In order to affect the tag, we need to select the tag. So down here is my roadmap, my tag selector. So in this particular case, I'm going to select the body tag. The body tag is the entire site. Everything on the site that I can visually see goes inside the body tag. I'm going to come over here and make a rule. And the only thing we're going to do is select tag, as in tag, you're it. Tag, you're it. I just want to change the rule for the body tag. So what's the name of this dialog box? new CSS rule. So if I hit OK or the return key, it's going to say CSS definition for body. So that's exactly what we're going to change right now. There's no way to change the font and the size. I'm just going to simply change the color. And I'm going to change the color to white so I can actually see the text and just put it on the page. Okay, make a change, save a change. So just made a simple body rule to simply change that color to white. Okay, so now we're going to start building the page. So here's what you want to pay attention to. Now, if this helps you, 
to do a printout of the page and mark it up by hand. You can do that as well. Whatever you feel is more comfortable, whatever you feel works for you. So as an example, this section up here is going to be the nav section. Now we do have two nav sections. We have a nav section up on top and we have a nav section right here. So this will basically be our, let's call this our client nav section because it'd be for sign up or login or FAQ. And this will be the site nav section. So let's just distinguish the two. Now, as you're aware of, if you go to sites like yahoo.com, you'll see that there's many, many, many different types of navigation systems. There's navigation systems in the footer, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna use the semantic HTML5 nav tag, but then we're gonna give that particular nav tag an ID Therefore, we can talk to it differently. So what do I mean by that? Well, when we create our roles, this is going to be a nav here, but this is also going to be a nav. So how can I format this nav different from this nav? The answer is to give it an ID. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to select this content and pay close attention to this because if you miss a step or you do it your way, it's not going to work. So everything we do right now will be inside the wrapper, which is right here. Okay, so the first tag we want to put here in this particular case, and again, it depends on the design of your site. Okay, we're going to put in the nav tag, then we're going to call this the header tag. And then inside the header tag, we're going to put the figure tag, or this could actually be a section tag, but we're going to call this the figure tag, and this will be the nav tag, and main content, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's do this. So again, make sure this is selected, and we're simply going to type in the word lowercase nav. Okay. Now we're going to hit the comma and I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to type in the next tag, which is this tag right here. Now again, do not hit the return key. I'm going to type in header, H-E-A-D-E-R. I'm going to hit the comma and inside of header is going to be the figure, F-I-G-U-E-R, figure. Now, these are not made up names. These are physical names of tags. Now, to share something with you, what I mean by that, if I come down here, and I'm just doing this as a for instance so you understand what I'm talking about. If I click right here and I pick where it says tag, this is my entire list of every single HTML and HTML5 tag that I can have inside of my document. So figure is one of the tags that I can have. Header is one of the tags that I can have. Nav is one of the tags. Now again, these are not these are not made up names. These are not IDs. These are physical, physical HTML tags, and in this particular case, HTML5 tags, which means you have to call it exactly what it is. It's not figures, it's not headers, it's figure. So figure. So figure is going to be followed by nav. Okay, which is this tag right here. So what I'm doing, I'm just basically doing like a layout to my apartment. I'm doing a layout for the sections of my site. That's what I want to pay attention to when I'm mocking it up. I'm basically doing the markup. Now at this point, I'm not making rules. I'm simply making tags. It's really, really that simple. So I'm going to say nav comma. Now nav tag is going to be followed by this section here. So I'm going to, command, I'm going to save that and command minus. So that's going to be followed by this section right here. Now, if you want to call this, this is going to be a section. This is going to be a section, which is HTML5 section tag. Okay, so this will be a section, and this section is going to be followed by another section. So this section here, we will give a name to it. We will give call this like a graphic section, or this could also technically, if you want to do this, this whole entire section in here, this area right here could actually be called the header, but again, it really depends on how you want to set this up. So we're going to hit the space bar and call that section. Okay, now inside the section, we're just going to hit the comma again. Now, for those of you wondering why I'm putting in the comma where I'm getting that from, there's a method to my madness, which I will share with you in just a second. I'm at the space bar. So if I zoom back out of here for a second, so I have another, I have another section followed by another section, followed by a footer. So we're going to say section. Now, I'm just going to treat this very generically as we build the site. It'll make it less confusing. I'm just going to generically look at this top section here as my header, followed by a section, followed by a section, followed by a section, followed by a footer. Okay, so if that's not confusing enough. So command option one fits in window. So it's going to be a section. In fact, if I really want to be lazy, I can do this. Now again, eventually we're going to have what's called article tags, but I'm just going to keep this very, very simple. 
followed by a section, followed by a section, followed by a footer. Make a change, save a change. Okay, now, how does this help us? Because right now, we have different sections set up. Now, once we get into the second section, this is our first section, again, command minus. So this is gonna be a section, and then this is gonna be a section. And this section here can be followed by an article. So what I wanna share with you so once we get to building that, the second section is going to be followed by an article tag. Article, comma. Now again, there's a method to my madness, and this is what I want to share with you. Okay, I'm going to select the content. Now I can just click right here and select that content. Now, what I need to do to start here, and this is a very important thing to pay attention to, Make sure this is properly spelled, section, article, footer, because otherwise you're really going to be screwed. So in order to affect the content, I'm going to select the content. Then edit, copy, command C, control C, Macintosh, sorry, command C, Macintosh, control C, Windows. Then based on these choices, we're going to make a new CSS rule. And I want to make a rule, a combination rule, so I need to select here. Now I'm not concerned about the body tag. That doesn't concern me right now. I already have a rule for that. So I copied from here because I can now paste from here. Now part of the reason I put the commas in there is that this must be comma separated. I can't just say nav, header, figure. That implies that the figure is inside of the header, which is inside of the net, and that's not what I want to do. I also want to get rid of redundancies. In fact, in this particular case, I don't need the footer rule at all. We're not gonna make a footer rule. We're just gonna make a section rule and a header rule. Now in addition to that, we're going to, because we're eventually gonna be using this, we're also gonna make what's called the aside tag. Now it doesn't matter if there's spaces in here or not. In fact, if you wanna tighten up the space, it doesn't matter. It will do it exactly the same way, whether there's a space in there or not, but there must be a comma in here, okay? So we're gonna say comma aside, and aside is basically what you do for a sidebar. And we're just going to make a rule for that. Again, just, just bear with me for a second as I explain this concept. So part of the reason I put the commas in there, because one thing perhaps you don't know about me unless you've seen some of my previous videos, is that I'm a lazy guy. Meaning that I don't like to reinvent the wheel. If I do it once, I want to let the software do it again and again and again and again. So part of the reason I put the commas in there is I didn't have to retype this whole thing. I just copy and paste. Okay, So I have nav, header, figure, nav, article, aside. Now, it doesn't matter the order that these are in, by the way. I'm just doing it just, just so we can get this done, and I hit OK. Now, here's what I start to have to pay attention to. How do I want to set up these rules by default? By default, how do I want to set these rules up? Well, I do want to generically talk to the nav, header, figure, uh, I'm sorry, Nav in there twice, don't I? We'll fix that. Uh, I, I realize I just made a mistake, but I will show you how to fix that in just a second. So based on these choices, here's what we want to do. We're going to go to the category of box, and we're going to say, we're going to immediately convert this page into a fully grid design. So we want to make the width of each tag be 100% wide. Now, in addition to that, I will talk about this in great detail as the course progresses, but this is my basic setup for these different tag selectors. We're gonna float to the left and we're gonna clear to the left. Now, again, I'll explain in more detail what actually that means. Okay, now, very important step here. There's no reason to set this to zero and zero because that, that's what the asterisk tag did for us in our previous video. Okay, but we are gonna set this to be 100% wide, float to the left, clear to the left. And again, once you sign up for my full course, I go into great detail on how to get this done. But hopefully at this point, you can see I'm involving you in the thinking process and basically there's a reason for what I do. Now, the next thing we need to do based on these categories, category of block, by default, these, these tags by default are inline elements, which means they just take up their own space. What we wanna have happen, we want these to be block of type, meaning that it will take up the width of the parent tag. Now, what I mean by that is in this particular case, the width of the parent tag is the wrapper. So by default, this is gonna take up the width of the wrapper tag. If I set this based on these choices, all these different tags to display as a block of type. So HTML5 tags should be set to a block of type. So again, to review here, we're setting these tags to a block of type 
We're setting the width of the box to be 100%. We're floating to the left and clearing to the left. And I hit OK. Make a change. Save a change. Now we're going to correct that problem. I don't need the second nav. So I can simply just delete that. Now I still have to keep the comma in there. And if I want to tighten that up as well, I can. But again, you just have to make sure that you're keeping the comma in there. Now, the advantage of what we just did, by the way, for those of you that are coders, well, yeah, if you want to write this code from scratch, well, there you go. That's how you do it. Okay, but why do you want to do that when that's what Dream River did for us simply by clicking a few buttons and pulling down a few menus? Why don't you want to work smart? Okay, now at this point, we have no need for these commas. These commas don't need to be there. We just did that to copy and paste over to here, which is a lazy technique. So now we can do with all the tricks in the book. This is going back to WordPerfect circa 1975, probably before most of you were born. Command F, find, search and replace. I'm just going to find a comma and replace it with nothing. So based on these choices, Command F, find, Macintosh, Control F, find for Windows, we're simply going to find these commas, which means I don't want to select, delete, select, delete. I want the software to work for me and replace all. And that gets rid of those commas. Of course, we don't need this. We can close, make a change, save a change. Now, here's something you really want to pay attention to. You might think, well, wait a second. Didn't we just set the rules of the nav and the header and the figure to be 100% wide and float to the left? And why isn't that happening? Why isn't that working? Do I need to launch this in a browser window? Do I need to go to Live View maybe and see how this is working? Well, notice when I go to Live View, by the way, you can't see. Live View doesn't show you, nor when I publish this to the web. Keep in mind, this is not a graphic in the background. This is a tracing image. The tracing image doesn't show up in a real life website. The tracing image is just for you to trace over on top of. So if you publish this in a browser window or go to Live View, you're not going to see anything. Now, since we're looking at white type on a white background, you'll definitely see nothing. But what I want to share with you is this. The reason that these are not formatting is these are not tagged. This is just a bunch of words, and this is a really, really important breakthrough, okay? Very important step here. This is nothing more than a bunch of words. These words have not been tagged. The words have not been tagged, okay? So I decided that. I'm going to do one more video for free, one more free video to show you the simple, simple technique of tagging this. Now, for making the rules of the tags, that's when you'll have to sign up for the full course. And I hopefully you respect that and hopefully you appreciate that. So as a little bonus here, and again, if you're on YouTube, welcome. But I really highly suggest that you watch these free versions, not on YouTube, no disrespect to YouTube, but go to Udemy to sign up for a free account and watch it on Udemy and you'll be really sold on how that's a better system for learning. YouTube is great if you're not trying to learn something, if you're just watching like uh, Entertainment Tonight or you're watching a Sting concert or Miles Davis at the Blackhawk, that's another story. But if you want to learn this and take notes and ask questions to the instructor, that's why you want to go to Udemy. Okay? So in our next video, I will share with you my simple, simple, and I do mean simple technique for tagging the content and I'll explain what that means in the next video.